Okay, make it, we'll make a start. I don't know who else is joining us. Okay, Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let's pray. And I pray that the Lord of peace will just fill our hearts and minds and align us once again in this time of shaking, that as he shakes, nothing will be left except that of him, and that we will become more and more like him, so that when we look into the word, the mirror of his image, that we will become more and more like him. Good morning, Daniel. Hey, hey, Good morning. Hey, Good morning, church family. I am Daniel Schneider, and I am the children's director here at King of Kings, alongside... Damien, I'm the youth director here, and it is so exciting to have you join us this morning. So the Next Gen team is welcoming you to church this morning, so we thought we'd do something a little different, and Damien and I are social distancing, so I want you to know we are totally social distancing, but we just wanted to come together and just greet you and welcome you this morning. We are so excited about what the Lord's going to do. Um, we're in a new month. It's June. And so I believe we've got some announcements to kick us off with, don't we? Yeah, we do. Just one or two things, church. Firstly, it is Communion Sunday. And like Daniel said, we're so glad that you've joined us. And uh, Communion is all about being together. And uh, today we're going to be celebrating Dolores Hardenberg being welcomed into membership. And she's being, a, she's being brought into our family, which is really, really special. Congratulations. Dolores, it's very, very exciting to have you with us. And uh, we're also going to be having a little social time after church today on Zoom. Pastor Neil's going to be hosting a little get-together at 12 o'clock today uh, where you can come, bring your tea, bring your coffee, and we can just sit and connect with each other. It's going to be very special. That sounds so fun. And maybe Neil will provide coffee tea? I hope so. Virtually? I don't know how that might work. But also, since we're talking about Zoom, okay, I just have to ask, Damien, when you type in Zoom, Sorry. Isn't it hilarious, like, the race car always pops up, does it pop yes, up for you? That, it just always makes me laugh, and it makes me happy, like, Zoom, because we are living in a new world of Zoom is becoming a norm, and so that emoji pops up quite a bit, and it makes me laugh. But speaking of Zoom, not the car, but Zoom meetings, speaking of those, our Monday night Zoom prayer meeting that usually is a meeting on Monday nights is being moved to Tuesday nights, Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. If you would like to connect and be a part of the prayer team that meets every Tuesday night and prays, if you will just email this email that's right under me to connect to make sure that you will know when they're meeting, but they are starting this Tuesday at 7, so you'll know that that way you can get that Zoom invitation and the password to be able to connect online. Yeah, that's going to be really exciting too, church. If you are not connected with one of our prayer groups or smores, please message or email this uh, address at the bottom so that we can make sure that you're connected. Uh, speaking of more connection stuff and other things to do during the week, Danielle, there's one more thing, which is the worship night. Yes, so Sunday night, I don't know how many of you, were you able to watch Sunday night? I was. was really oh awesome. my goodness. Um, did you guys, did you hear me singing like from my couch in Capri? I, you may have been able to. Um, uh, Sunday night, Sino um, went live on Facebook Live to do a worship evening with us. So it was live on Facebook and YouTube, and, and so it was on there, and it was a beautiful evening where the Holy Spirit just came, and we worshiped as a community. Even though we were all in different places, there was such a connection. And so we are going to continue that on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. So those of you who normally were used to coming to church at 6 o'clock, Damien, it's still the same. It's just going to be from your lounge, from wherever you uh, wherever you are on Sunday nights at 6 o'clock. So Sunday nights at 6 o'clock, this Sunday, Tristan will be leading us in a time of worship. So go to Facebook. It will be live on Facebook, and then it will get uploaded to YouTube if you can't make it. But I encourage you. Oh, it was such a blessed evening. I'm looking forward to tonight. Yeah, there really is something so special about worshiping together, church. And uh, speaking of worship, we're going to go into a time of worship now, and I want to pray for us just so we can get our hearts in the right space. And so here we go. So Father God, I thank you so much for this time together. Thank you so much for Church on the Line, where we can gather in your name. God, I pray that during this time, as we step into a place of worship, Lord, I pray that your presence will be close to us, that we will be able to open our hearts to you, Lord. And as we sing with the worship team, Lord, I pray that you would help us to not feel alone. Help us to know that we are connected, Lord, regardless of the distances around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I feel 
this morning. It's the new song we sang last week. I'm hoping that it's a little bit more familiar to you, and so let's sing it out together, a song of praise. Praise be the weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be the weapon that conquers all anxiety. Many and rise. Let praise arise. We see your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory.
was lost, but he brought me his love for me. His love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, it's free and deep. I'm a child of God, yes, I. His grace runs While I was a slave to Jesus died for me Yes, He died for me Through the sun sets free Oh, it's free and deep I'm a child There's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes, I am Yes, I am Yes, I am I'm chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against.
fountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my son. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my son. You are good. You are good, you are good, you are good, you are good, you are you are good, 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 Anchor in the waves, oh, he is my son. The king of God, he the fire inside my veins. The echo in the waves, oh, he is my son. Let me sing that again. The king of God, he the wind inside my sail. The anchor in the waves, oh, he is my son. And the king of God, be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, you good.
have the ability that you can give via credit card. So we just thank you again, church family, and for our friends and, and visitors that are visiting with us. Thank you so much for allowing us to continue ministry even in the middle of the pandemic that we are in. And I would love to pray over our offering right now, Damian. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for being able to be in community. God, even through technology that we are able to be together, Lord, and I thank you for that opportunity. Lord, I pray over this offering, Lord, I pray over every single person that's watching, whenever they are watching, Lord, God, that you would just bless. Lord, thank you for the opportunity for us to connect with each other, God, and knowing that you will provide, and we know that you are a God who provides for all of our needs. In your holy son's name we pray, amen. Amen. Church, we're going to go into the message now the pastor is going to be preaching and teaching on the character of Moses, and it's going to be a really beautiful story. So grab your notebooks, grab your coffee, grab your tea, and let's get into the word. Well, good morning, everyone. Time to get into the message today. And the next character that we are going to be looking at is Moses. Moses certainly had an interesting life. He faced many challenges, many uh, difficult circumstances. And so I'm hoping that today's message is going to be really helpful for you. Tough times have always been the perfect environment for growing great faith. A famous early church historian, Tertullian, said this, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. In other words, tough times breed really tough Christians. I also believe that today will be a very special word for those who are dealing with disappointment. I'll be honest with you, <laughs> over the past few weeks, uh, I've had to face different kinds of disappointments. Can I confess to you just for a few moments? There have been a few times when I've just felt really down, uh, heavy hearted, frustrated, worried, uh, sometimes uh, just desperately wanting to take a long drive and get out of the house and just get away from it all. And I think. Um, the, the Corona Coaster, as it's been labeled, has been a rough ride for, for many of us. But if you want to learn to thrive, to really thrive as a Christian, you have to learn how to deal with challenges. And you have to learn how to deal with disappointments in life. Just ask Moses. I think his story is going to be spot on for us today. So let's dive in. Like so many of us, Moses' faith story actually begins with his parents, his mother in particular. Uh, she seems to have been a woman of remarkable faith. A uh, quick shout out to all the amazing uh, spiritual mothers out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but her name was Jochebed, and I believe that her faith impacted and shaped her son's faith. Uh, not only through her, of course, I, I'm sure Moses' father as well, because here is what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 about Moses' parents. Uh, so let's get into the word today. Uh, Hebrews 11, verse 23. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born, because they saw that he was no ordinary child. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. You see, Moses was born into a very oppressive situation. Egypt was a very scary place to live uh, in those days if you were Jewish. And picking up from last week and Pastor Tristan's great message on Joseph, uh, under the leadership of Joseph, the Israelites had, had moved to Egypt during the famine. Uh, there they had grown and prospered to the point at which uh, the Egyptians were starting to get rather worried and concerned about them. And so as a result, the Egyptians basically enslaved the whole nation of Israel. It's sad how that happens so often in world history where people's fears lead them to oppress other people. And oh, please, Lord, we pray that that would not happen in our country May we not allow fear to lead us to oppress others. But, but that's what happened in Egypt in that day. And uh, their leader, the Pharaoh of Egypt, came up with this horrendous plan to keep the Israelites under control. 
Uh, let me read it to you from Exodus chapter 1. It says this, that the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shipra and Pua, uh, those are interesting names to pronounce, when you are helping the Hebrew woman during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it's a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. So as you can see, uh, this was an extremely dangerous environment for a little boy to be born into. Moses was, was born into this world in this very ugly situation. Can you imagine what it must have been like to be parents? Uh, it must have been awful. So Moses' mother knew that her son's life was in danger and she had to make a plan. So here's what happened in Exodus chapter 2. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him. She coated it with tar and pitch. And then she placed the child in it and among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. Her sister, sorry, his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. I cannot imagine what Jochebed, Moses' mother, was going through when she came up with this, this crazy plan. I mean, this is a crazy plan. It almost looks like she abandoned him, but she did not. She had a plan, and it was a pretty risky plan, like most faith plans are, even with his sister Miriam watching and following from a distance. I mean, how many of you parents would let your little baby float off in a river? I don't know if, if I would have the faith for that. But I believe there is a great faith in the story that we don't see. Because miraculously, Pharaoh's daughter finds him, then gives Moses' mother the job of raising her own child. What an amazing story. A faith story. A story that the book of Hebrews honors. Here's the first point I want to make about, about faith today. Faith sees a future where there seems to be none. Do you see that? Faith sees a future where there seems to be none. When, when Moses' parents looked down at their little boy, I bet they could not conceive of him not having a future. We are told when they, when they saw him, they saw he was no ordinary child. I think most parents feel that way about their children. Um, so they hid him for three months before embarking on this crazy plan. While we do not know what they thought would happen, they were not prepared to accept that there was no hope and no future for their son. And that is what they are commended for in their faith. I suspect, um, like me, and many of the parents in our church family right now are rather concerned about your children during this time. You've been anxious uh, about their health, about their safety. You've been anxious about their returning to school like some have had to do now. You've been anxious about their education. You've been worried about their future. Trust me, I know how you feel. I'm sure that Moses' parents would have a thing or two to tell us today. They would tell us, faith sees a future where there seems to be none. Come on now, I really hope I'm speaking to someone out there. I really hope so. I, I know many of you are concerned. 
about your children, about your jobs, about your income, about your families, about your future. I want to encourage you today. Can I speak the word of God over you today? Can I just uh, speak prophetic life over you today? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Live by faith. I'm not playing down the seriousness of what we're facing at the moment or what you may be facing at the moment for one moment. But um, I know this. God is calling us to be a people of faith. And so I'm calling you today to be that people of faith, to rise up and not fear. Rise up, men and women of God. Now is not a time for the faint-hearted. Sometimes in the kingdom, you've got to lay hold of faith. You've got to rise up. You've got to see a future where there seems to be no future. By God's grace, you've got to see a way. And, uh, and sometimes that comes when there seems to be no way. So I just love how Moses' parents saw a future where there seemed to be none. That's faith. That's amazing and it's a challenge to me today. I trust it is for you too. So Moses grew up with a foot in, in two different worlds, if you'd like to see it in that way. He was, uh, on one hand, the pampered uh, son, uh, grandson of the Pharaoh, really. But he was also, on the other hand, an Israelite. Uh, and, uh, he, and he had these two identities in many ways. Um, and these two identities did not always mix very well. When the tension between the two eventually came to a head, Moses had a choice to make. Hebrews chapter 11 tells us this about that. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Rather, he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. That's a challenge to me. Here's the next point I take from that about faith today. Faith changes your identity. Faith changes your identity, which eventually changes your behavior as well. You see, Moses grew up with all the wealth and the status of being a Pharaoh's grandson, yet his identity was that of an Israelite. He always saw himself as an Israelite. And so the story for him shifts dramatically when Exodus tells us about what happened when he saw one of his own people being mistreated. The story is in Exodus chapter 3. Let me quickly show it to you. One day, after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were, and he watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Looking this way and that and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and he hid him in the sand. Part of Moses' journey was about finding his true identity. He knew who he was thanks to his mother's hand in raising him. And his heart really lay with the mistreated Israelites. But sadly, this led him to murder and then having to escape into the Arabian desert where he became a shepherd, got married and settled. The Bible says after he murdered this Egyptian in Exodus 3.15, when Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian. You see, in identifying with his people and God's people, it, it looked like he blew it big time because now not only was he an enemy of his grandfather, the Pharaoh, but he was also cut off from his real family, now having to make his home among strangers. So yes, Moses messed up horribly by killing somebody. He should never have done that. Uh, but behind it, he was right to be outraged by the injustice he saw. He just went about dealing with it all wrong. He felt for the Israelites deeply because they were his people. 
not just some strangers to be mistreated. Initially, Moses' home was the palace, but his heart was with the Israelites in their slavery. His identity was what dictated his behavior. The same is true for us, isn't it? I'd like to ask you, what is your identity? Who do you see yourself as? Who do, who do you see yourself belonging to? Do you see yourself as part of the family of God? The people of God? Because if you do, uh, that will dictate a little bit about how you behave. If you believe and understand that you are God's child and that your worth is from Him, not from anything you do, it helps you to act in faith. But if you identify yourself according to how the world may see you, uh, defined by race, gender, your bank balance, your social influence, well, you'll act according to that. So identity is a choice that you make. Moses refused to be known as uh, the part of the royal family and he chose to be a part of God's people. Here's the, the next lesson about faith. Point number three today. Faith makes tough choices. Sometimes your faith will lead you to making a really tough choice. Have you experienced that yet? Verse 26 says this about Moses. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as greater value than all of the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Think about that just for a moment. Think about all that Moses gave up uh, in Pharaoh's household. It's the fairy tale dream that everyone lives for, isn't it? Uh, fame, wealth, popularity. It's the palace life. I mean, come on, who, who doesn't want a bit of the palace treatment, right? Be honest now, money, wealth, power, all the Egyptian ladies you could want. You see, if your faith is the real deal, it will lead you to make tough choices. And Moses, Moses' faith was the real deal. And he decided to give that all up. He made his choice. He, he walked away from it, albeit in not the greatest of circumstances. And then much later, at the leading of God, he came back to lead God's people out of Egypt as well. Those must have been such difficult life decisions. Even the decision to come back. His life would have been in grave danger. He would have been a disgrace to his adopted royal family. Yet he did it. His faith led him to make tough decisions. And the writer of Hebrews uses interesting wording here. It says, Moses regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ to be of greater value. What does that mean? I mean, Jesus was born about 1,400 years after Moses, right? Well, very simply, Jesus the Messiah was promised by God from the very beginning. And the Israelites had been looking to a Savior, looking to a Messiah. Moses knew that. And Moses put his trust in that Savior, Jesus Christ, even way back then. For him, God's plan was more important than the benefits he could have claimed for himself as the Pharaoh's grandson. Tough choices are never easy. As a leadership here at King of Kings, we've had to make some tough choices over the last few weeks. When the president announced that uh, places of worship could open up for services uh, for, for 50 people now again, our initial uh, reaction was, this is awesome, yay, we've been missing meeting together uh, for so long now, yet we feel for now it's not the right choice for us. We have to think about the health and safety of our whole church family. We have to choose um, and think about those in our family who are ill, who are more vulnerable than others. So we decided now is not the right time to start church services again. I mean, that was a tough choice to make. Some people will disagree. Some will say we should be meeting now and we should show more faith and stop living in fear. Others will agree. But I do trust that you'll see the bigger picture 
Um, and that sometimes, by faith, we have to make some tough choices. It's just the right thing to do right now. Well, here's the next point that uh, I'd like to make today. Faith keeps focused on God's view, not people's. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27 says this of Moses, By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who was invisible. How did this Moses, who had run from Egypt, fearing for his life, find the courage to go back and face the Pharaoh? The Bible says he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. You see, friends, when you keep focused on the real king, you don't fear the little kings of this world. Moses faced his powerful step-grandfather who wanted him dead. And we read this in Exodus 5. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, Moses said, Let my people go so that they may hold a festival to me in the wilderness. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. So much was unsaid in this first meeting. It must have been such an awkward meeting between two very determined men. Uh, was, was the Pharaoh furious to see Moses again? Or was he hopeful that he'd come to try and make up with him in some way? Did some of the palace officials whisper to Moses and say, Why have you given this all up? This could have all belonged to you. But you see, Moses kept focused on God's view, not on the view of people. He obeyed God's instructions, something that's not very easy to do. He showed faith in God when he followed God's plan instead of his own. I'm sure his own plan had been to live out in the desert, chill on the stoop, uh, farm goats and raise his family peacefully. I'm 100% sure that he was not dreaming of becoming this hero leader of Israel. But Moses looked to God. He looked at God's view and what God wanted him to do, and he pushed through all of his fears. He, he, he never feared the Pharaoh or what he could do to him. He persevered because he saw him who was invisible, our mighty God. What about you, my friend? Are you pushing through all those fears that you're experiencing at the moment? Are you persevering? Are you seeing him who is invisible? Are you keeping your focus on God's view and not just on what people are saying around you? Having said that, it's, it's also really wise to be accountable. A lot has been done in the name of the Lord that was way off. And so I appreciate how Moses sought out his brother Aaron. They ran the plan by the elders. Exodus chapter 4 says, Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites. And Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and they worshipped. While Moses chose to obey God rather than people, he did so in a way that showed wisdom and accountability. He checked with the elders, other people of faith. If you believe that God has spoken to you about something, I'd encourage you to do likewise. Learn to run it by people. Uh, learn to check with people that you trust. Here's the last point today. Faith keeps going when things seem impossible. As the story progresses, the challenges that Moses faced just seem to get bigger and bigger. Hebrews 11 shares some really significant ones. In verse 28, it says, By faith, Moses kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. Verse 29, By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. Oh, there's so much in these two verses that we don't have time to get into today. But by faith, Moses kept the Passover. By faith, Moses trusted God as the angel of death passed over it. Go read the whole story. It's amazing. 
by faith, the people of God passed through the Red Sea by the power of God. It split before them to make a way where there seemed to be no way. Faith keeps going when things seem impossible. Right now, some things seem impossible. Like a plague, the coronavirus is a disease that is no respecter of persons. Like a plague, fear is sweeping the world. Like a plague, uh, the economy seems to be in tatters, not only here, but elsewhere in the world. Things seem impossible. But I want to remind you today, my friend, that nothing is impossible for God. By faith, Moses led the people of God through these strange plagues, including that horrible first Passover where the angel of death came over Egypt. By faith, Moses led the people through the Red Sea. And these were not an easy group of people to lead. If you read the story of them getting into the promised land, you'll see they were a fickle bunch. They were always questioning Moses, always grumbling, always moaning, wanting to go back to Egypt. I don't think any man ever put up with more complaints or lack of appreciation. Moses was such a humble leader. A good example of this is found in Exodus 15. After Moses had led them through the Red Sea, the Israelites traveled three days through the desert without finding water. And the Bible says this, when they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? Well, I feel like in many ways we've, we've hit a, a Marah of sorts. We've arrived at a place in our journey that is uncomfortable, distasteful. None of us want to be in the situation we're in at the moment. It's, it's, it's bitter to the taste. But why does God lead us to mirage like this in our lives? Exodus 15 goes on to teach us this. There the Lord made a decree and there he tested them. He tested them. Friends, God allows these kinds of moments in uh, your life to test you, to test me. He uses disappointing circumstances to check your reaction, to test your character in the daily irritations of life. And he wants to know, do you really trust me? Will you really live by faith when it really counts? See, Moses was a godly man. It is why he is honored for his faith. And God comes through for him and the people of God with miracles upon miracles. He rescues them. And church, I want to say, as I wrap, it's so easy to give up when things are tough. When there's so much opposition, when things seem so uh, difficult and where disappointments just seem to mount upon disappointments. When it seems like there's no clear or easy answer. It is faith, it is people of faith who keep trusting God during times like that. You know what, church? I know that many of us are facing huge disappointments right now. I want to say this. I don't believe that miracles are something that we have left behind. Jesus said, if we believe in him, we will see great things happening. Do you believe that? I think too often we give up. I think we give up when, when uh, things are not working out, when we can't fix things ourselves. But Moses' faith was not in his ability to rescue the Israelites. His faith was in God's ability. There's a big difference there. And so I'd like to leave and end with the words of the Master today. Our Master Jesus, he said this, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. 
We're going to go into a time of communion now, everyone. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to, to make our lives right with the Lord. If you are far from Him, this is an opportunity for you to spend some time fixing that relationship with the Lord. Maybe for some of you, you've, like the message uh, revealed today, just been feeling disappointed, maybe struggling with a lack of faith. And um, I want you to know that the Lord loves you. And I want you to know that communion is a reminder of what He did on the cross for you, showing how much He loves you. And just like Moses was looking to the Messiah and the Savior, so we too look to Jesus, our Savior. And so um, Sino and Brittany are going to lead us in a song as we have a time of communion in our homes together. I want to encourage you to go and find some juice and some bread. And uh, I want to remind you today that the, the juice reminds us of the blood of Jesus that was poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And the bread reminds us of his body that was broken for us. And so as you eat and drink together, I want to encourage you to remember Jesus and all that he's done for you, my friend. He loves you and he's there for you. And he wants to be a part of helping you and rescuing you and looking after you. Will you trust him today? Let's enjoy a time of communion together as Brit and as um, Sino lead us in a new song that they have written, um, especially for our church. This is their own song. I trust it will minister to you and be a blessing to you as we share communion together.
So if you want to pop in, you need to make an appointment with us. So we're going to put up an email address that you can message or uh, a cell phone number that you can message on as well to make that appointment. But remember, if you're not feeling well, please do not come in. Please do not put us at risk or anybody else at risk. But other than that, Danielle, it's been so nice to host with you this morning. It's been so good to be with you this morning. And church family, it's been so great to be with you and all of our visitors as well. Yeah, so thank you, church. Have an amazing week, and we'll see you soon. 